there, sweet friends. I hope you are all well. Welcome back or welcome if you're new. I'm excited to share this project with you today. We're going to create a very sweet and simple inspired pocket folio and I have this created with papers from my stash. So this was a great stash buster. They're really easy to make and they go pretty quickly. And so this is the one we're going to create today. And I'll also show you this one and this one at the end, a little bit more detail added and you can put as little or as much embellishing as you like to finish these quick to make folios out with your own personal style. So if that sounds good to you, then stick around and we'll make it together. The base is going to be composed of two parts. The first being the pocket page. And we're starting with a standard size sheet of eight and a half by 11, 65 pound weight cardstock. For today, I'm gonna to demonstrate using this piece that is white, just so you can easily see where my score lines are. But for your project, you would want to pick a cardstock that would better coordinate with the collection that you want to use. I've turned that sheet over so that the long side will be at the top of my scoreboard and I want to begin to add my score lines in one direction. And so the first one is at one and a half. The second is at five and a half. The third is at nine and a half. Then you want to flip this so the short side is on the top and you want to score it half an inch in from either side. And I find it easier to hold it on this side because I'm right handed and I'll just score this half inch side here, flip it around and score half an inch again. That puts it at eight, by the way. Just easier for me being a right handed person. So that's all you need to do to score that page for your pocket. I'll just start to fold that on the score line that will be right in the middle and you can take your score tool and reinforce that crease. Now what I wanna do is come in and cut from that score line up to where they intersect. So I'm just gonna take out this corner I found this to be easier on my guillotine cutter, but if you're careful and take your time, you can get this cut with your scissor as well. And then come back in and cut this score line as well. Repeat that for the other side. Now you can unfold that and fold it back in. These will become your pockets. So you wanna run your score tool over that as well. Do that for both sides. And then turn that so you can fold over those flaps. You want to come in now with your scissor and cut off that corner. That will help to reduce some of the bulk there and you would do that for all four sides. Now you see when this is all folded, we're gonna get two long pockets here. And so this is where I'm gonna to switch to the blue card stack that I've chosen for my project. I have all those same measurements and score lines and cuts made. You want to fill the pocket first before you wrap that around to create the pocket. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to get your pattern paper into it. So I'm just choosing to mix and match my pattern so that I have a definite layering effect. And so the paper that will be the full size page is going to be seven and three eighths by three and seven eighths. And that will be all throughout the book as well as the front and back cover. So you're gonna get the nice border of that blue showing. 
and do that for both sides. Now you can pull the backing from your double-sided adhesive. We're going to use our two glue combo for this. So flip that over and then switch it to the back. You can add your Tombow to these flaps and just press that over into place. The double-sided tape will hold it in place while the glue sets up. And then do the same process for this side. You want to use that layering pattern now to cover the front of your pockets and so I'm just going to use the reverse side of that pattern and it is going to be seven and three eighths high by one and three eighths wide. So you have that pocket measurement with the card sack is going to be one and a half. Want to finish both sides again. So this is going to be one portion of our folio. We have a second prepared in just the same measurements and the same process, but we need to bring these together. So we need a connector. So I have the same blue cardstock. This time it's cut to be seven and a half by eight and scored at four. So I'm just going to utilize the offcuts that I created while working along on my other pages, but you're still going to get that overall full page measurement. These inside pages will be so nice for larger pictures. There's plenty of room here. So that finishes the inside of our connector. Let's bring our pockets back now. And what I want to do is adhere these together. So I want to utilize my two glue combo for this. Especially on these parts where it's holding the book together. And I'm just going to stack these, being very careful to keep my corners together and straight along. The bottom and the sides. And then do that same process for connecting the second pocket portion to the connector. Now we have the inside all sorted out. Let's add a front and back cover. And if you were making a sweet and simple style project, this is where you would be done. And this would be a great use for your stash, getting through those papers so that you can make room for new collections. And I'm gonna use the same beautiful large floral on the cover on the front. Now this collection did not have very usable cut apart 
images. It had some, but they would have had unusual edges and uh, corners that were not square. So I've elected to make inserts for these pages out of more of that collection paper. And so my cardstock here is cut to be seven and a quarter by three and three quarters. And the pattern paper is seven and an eight by three and five eighths. And I cut that a little bit smaller so that they would slide in and out of those pockets easily. And because all of our pockets are on the outside of the pages, once it's closed, all of these tags will stay nicely inside. And I just utilize one sheet to get all of these inserts cut. Here is that last one. And so I think if you are batch crafting or making something for a craft fair, this would be a great start and you could add as little or as much embellishing as you like, but perfectly fine finish just the way it is. It's very sturdy and I did get use out of my stash paper. Here's that second one that I created. And so I did also use stash paper for this. The collection I started with, I did not have any of the remaining plaid. Of course, I went through that first. So I decided my layering paper would just be a piece of pink with some rose gold dots. And I know it doesn't actually go with that collection, but I thought it coordinated really well. And it gave me a kind of brighter, fresher fall feel. For this cover, I did add a little bit of a die cut detail. So it's still flat. It's still sweet and simple. And this is just the rooftop border from Lawn Fawn. And I really love how I get a scalloped effect there along with a stitch line. And so I just added that to be a little bit extra detail. So let me show you on this one. I had enough of each of these patterns to cut the same paper for the inserts that go in the pocket because these are quite large. And so that's gonna cover all that anyway. So you can just double up on that pattern or mix and match if that's what you wanna do. And so also on this one, I have not covered the back. And so I would be able to use this to do some journaling and add all the memories that go with my pictures. Did a couple of layering bits here as well, just to stretch that paper and get use out of it. And then here's the second set of pockets, both with their beautiful tags. And so this is gonna be quite thick. It's very nice and this is a perfect place to be done if you want a sweet and simple project. Now, of course, for the last one, I did have to add all of those finishing details that I love. And so this got a little bit chunkier and it was also a way for me to mix and match my collections. There are quite a few here from Graphic 45. And this was also another way for me to show that the pocket size is still good for the actual cut aparts that you would get with a collection. I just had to trim them down a little bit to fit, but they still work really well. And so I've got pretty much the same uh, measurements here. The only thing I left out were the created inserts, and I'll show you that on the inside, but I did add the flowers that I like. This trim is chevron twill from Really Reasonable Ribbon, and then I put a plaid here to tie it closed. A couple of fun little charms here, a little bit of glitter for my leaves, and a little bit of netting with a spider web on it. And so for the inside, I did utilize those three by four and four by six image cut aparts. These are from a variety of different collections, so it's kind of mix and match. But for all of the larger ones, I did trim it down to be three quarters of an inch wide. That way I know that it will slip into here easily and the book will close easily and not crease in the middle. So I've just picked some that I thought went together. And then here I had enough to cover this set of pages without having to layer it. But for the back page, I have more of those cut apart images. Some of these are nice as well. You could put journaling on the front. And then another set for this page. So that's going to be it for our project today. I really hope that you enjoyed this sweet and simple style folio that you can create with papers from your stash. And you can add as little or as much embellishing detail as you want that makes you happy. So if you did like this tutorial, make sure to give me a comment 
and a like. Don't forget to check in the description for links for that beautiful ribbon from Really Reasonable Ribbon. And as always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day, and I thank you so much for watching. Bye!